In this Debaco University video, I'm going to be going over the container types for cannabis production. We see a couple labeled here, or shown here in the images, but we're going to go into them in a little bit more detail, giving you some of the advantages and disadvantages of each. Let's get into the video. So first off, the goal of all containers is to hold a growing substrate in an area where the roots will grow and develop. The type of container selected can depend on the growing conditions and also possible points of transplant that's planned as the plant grows. I mean, where are you going to move this plant potentially going forward? That can influence potentially your decision or allow you to make the best decision to allow an easing of that process. Now, starting with the kind of the most obvious one you're probably most familiar with, and that's plastic containers. The reason why they're probably most familiar or most obvious is they're cheap, they're easy to get, and they come in a variety of sizes, all great advantages. However, some of the downfalls can be the storage, particularly in large-scale production, shipping, uh, if you're buying them by the pallet and then we're looking at just transporting them to the facility and also disposal of them uh, when they're uh, gone through at least one growth cycle or some are reusing them, uh, but disposal when they've kind of gotten past their shelf life. Then we get to air pots, which is kind of like a division of plastic pots to some extent, but we notice that they look very different. They allow for the air pruning of roots. So they're kind of allowing or preventing the roots from getting pot bound. So allowing air to get in and kind of self prune those roots before they come in contact with the edge of the container. This increases the root branching and maximizes the use of container area with roots. However, the downfall, because there are literal holes here on the sides as well as underneath, is that they can dry out quicker and growers may need to adjust their irrigation frequency and or durations. Then we get to fabric containers. So for our fabric containers, they store uh, well in small places. They're very easy to move. They can also increase aeration of the root zone, all great uh, positives. However, the fabric, depending on what fabric you get, they can break down over time, particularly if used in outdoor production. They also can be hard to clean because that fabric tends to bind and hold on to things. And the bottoms can rot, and that's the bottom of the actual pot because it usually comes down a container because it comes from kind of with the surface uh, that's been growing on. It can trap a lot of moisture in there, and as a result, it can cause a rot of the container itself. Then lastly, we get to biodegradable containers, and the advantage is that they're environmentally friendly. They can make transplant very easy. You just plant the whole pot and container. can also minimize the root disturbance, all great benefits. However, the time to break down can vary depend on the type of biodegradable pot you select. They can dry out faster due to the wicking of moisture, and their cost can be higher than some of the previous items mentioned. So for all of these container types, if there's one you want to learn a little bit more about because you like the advantages and can uh, dissuade some of the disadvantages, you're welcome to check out this channel for more detail explaining each of these container types.